so what will be your mental approach toward you know being in the final? Do you just want to take it as you did today, or is it going to feel different for you being in the final? No, I'm just going to take it as a, another match, of course. Uh, maybe a little bit. Yeah, maybe a little bit. I never was in the final in ATPS, so it's new to me. So I don't know. <laughs> I'll just the game plan is simple. I, I'll keep my serve, and then I'll, I'll wait for chances because both of the guys are serving unbelievable. And uh, if I keep my serve. I'll wait for the chances. I think the same for them. So it's an even game. Arnand didn't want to talk to me. Uh, did he help you during the break at all? And just talk one, a little bit more about how no, he's. No, 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 he's very superstitious. He didn't want to talk because, you know, you, you didn't want to talk with him after first round. So <laughs> oh, oh. Scott, if you would want to talk with him every day, he would talk. Uh. It's just, uh, just before final, then. Uh, He's a bit superstitious. We're gonna talk to coach maybe, after, first maybe after the tournament. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well how, did he help you during the break and just how has he helped you just really sum up how he's helped you these last three, four months? Uh, in the break we didn't really talk about the match. Just uh, ten minutes before I went on court he told me what I have to do, what I have to keep my focus on, of course, serve and keep aggressive. Right. This is the simple things, you know, but he put it in my brain so I went on court and I was exactly, I knew what I have to do. That's what a, what a good coach does, you know, he doesn't he doesn't need to talk much, he just says the right things, the right moment, and then you go on court and you do it. So, and overall, yeah, like I said, he made big uh, improvements in every aspect of my game. Mentally too, right? You're thinking on the court? Mentally, or? maybe maybe I'm just um, getting a little bit older yeah. and a little bit more, more um, I, I know what I want because a couple of years ago, I didn't really, uh, you know, I was playing tennis, but I still had dozens of other interests in my head, which were even more important than tennis. And more important to, to go somewhere out with my friends than to go to practice the next day, you know? So it was a little bit like that. So now I get my priorities lined up. I'm still living a normal life as much as I can, but in uh, some, some system. So you think it's difficult? I mean, for a 17, 18 year old guy, to, I mean, because most kids are probably still in school to come out and basically, you know, work a very demanding job and, you know, like, not think about all those distractions, fall on and Every person out. is different. I mean, I know guys who are, uh, who are living on court for seven, eight hours per day and they don't get enough of it. They are really focused mm -hmm. on court and they're really cool. I'm not like that, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I like playing tennis, but I'm not sick of that. I'm not sick with tennis. You know, mm -hmm. I, I enjoy it. I enjoy winning. I enjoy competing. I don't like practicing. I really hate practicing. I like to go and to make drills, to make hits from basket. I hate it. I just the only thing why I'm playing it is for the competing and for the taste of winning. That's it. Mm -hmm. So I'm totally different. And some other guys are just happy to be on court. You know, it's, it's different. So I don't know. But so how many yeah. hours a day do you practice then? I practice a lot. Yeah. I mean, you uh, just hate it. You just hate it. Yeah. <laughs> hated it. Yeah, I practice. It depends. It depends on the day. I do gym, I do fitness, I do running, I do tennis. It depends what kind of. If it's like preparing time, I, I, I do more gym, less tennis. Yeah, but good uh, five, six hours per day. So. Oh, is that nice? Your, da your dad's with Arnon, uh, right? Is that your dad sitting in with him, the older gentleman, or not? Yes. Yeah, one one of them is my dad. Okay, nice, yes. nice to be doing so well in front of your dad. Uh, He's in every tournament, so oh, he saw me. He saw me in bad bad things. He sees me in good. Travels with you, okay. Where's the rest of the family? You have a few both, both brothers, yeah. sisters. Yeah. Uh, my brother is here. Mm -hmm. He came. He's uh, practicing in Saddlebrook. He's playing golf. And uh, my, younger? My both younger brothers. Mm -hmm. yeah. My both younger sister, no, my both younger sisters, yes, are uh, playing tennis also. And uh, my older sister, she finished law in London, and now she is in, uh, in Paris studying for for for, for magister in uh, in art. Master's master's my master, wow. yeah, wow. master's degree in art. So. Mm -hmm. Very impressive. Um, was there anything in particular that maybe you stopped doing and that? at like 3-3 three, three in the second set, it was like the only time in the match that you didn't have total control, it seemed. Was there anything that was not going right for you? When you gave the break back. You yeah. You gave the break back. You had a bad game. 4-4. Uh, Honestly, uh, when I, when, how, how the match was going, it was going that way that uh, 
one po point he had to have a, some break points and maybe maybe get a break because he was starting to return better. Mm. Maybe I lost a little bit of concentration, but I don't think that was the point. I mean, also, yeah, I, I remember now the game. Uh, it was 15-30 uh, and I made ace. I made a complete clean ace outside. I went to the mark, I saw half of the ball was on the line. I don't understand why... Uh, Okay, I understand why, but uh, I think it would be really great that they would put Hawkeye on every center court and every ATP event. Mm. That's it. Expensive. And then it looked like... Hey, come on, if you make a tournament, you can you can try to find, because if some, if some uh, tournaments have it and some don't, it's just not fair. Yeah, and, uh, I mean, some, some bad calls are really making the match go around. Imagine if it's a breakpoint, second serve, you make a double fall, that's it, you lost the break. It's, it can totally, totally screw your match. Yeah, the other night against mm -hmm. she got screwed. <laughs> but then, it, I mean, right after that, it looked like you really regained your focus yeah. and were very aggressive. It was like, you know, yeah, dead on. The point. If I play aggressive, sooner or later I'll, I'll uh, get the opportunities, you know, if I start to be nervous and uh, more passive, then uh, that's it for me. Mm -hmm. You haven't beaten a top ten player in quite a while, but you you've had wins over Blake and I think Robredo. I mean, you you, it's, uh, you seem confident right now. You feel like that's the next step for you. Win this thing, and then this year you're gonna beat some of those guys. If I if I play uh, if I don't stop at this tournament, if I continue playing well, if I continue winning more matches, I'll be even more confident. Why not? Why? I mean, I beat. A bit Stepanek, a bit Verdik last week. They are for me, for me, they are one of the top players in the world. You know, maybe not ranking wise, but Verdik is a unbelievable player. So anything can happen, I think. Of course, they are the favorites. They are, you know, they are there. I'm there, but uh, anything can happen. Tennis is a terrible sport. <laughs>